What's up, my soldiers? It's Wobbly Honor. Today I'm going to answer a question I received from Adriana B. Her question was, what is it like when you go operational? What is the environment like? And she also wanted to know, what is it like when you fly into your first duty base? Is there somebody there to pick you up or are you just left by yourself? So first of all, thank you Adriana for being a great subscriber because you've been subscribed to my channel for forever. And thank you for asking that question. Pretty much, once you go operational, everything becomes free. Like there's not as many restrictions as there ever was at tech school, at BMT, in MEPS, like all that kind of falls away. Like right now, I'm on my free time. In a couple hours, I have to report to work, but as soon as I get off, I'm back with my free time. You can do whatever you want pretty much. Obviously, there are some restrictions. There's always going to be restrictions, but it's a lot more like you have your freedom back. This morning, I went to the gym. If I wanted to, I could have watched a movie. I could have played Xbox all morning. I could have went to college. I could have been taking classes. You can do a lot of things. Most jobs in the Air Force have a typical eight-hour shift, so it'll be you come in at around seven, you leave around three, and that'll be pretty much your work day. But that pretty much applies to all your office jobs, all your desk jobs. For your maintenance jobs, you'll be working all day long. So your shop will have three different shifts. You'll have day shift, which is typically seven to three. Then you have what's called swing shift, which is three to 11 at night. And then you have mid shift, which is 11 to uh, back to seven in the morning. So it's a constant work schedule for maintenance. The only time that'll stop is most weekends. Most weekends we do get off, we do get free time. But if there's something that's like really pressing, then we'll be working throughout the weekend. The reason I say all that is because in the Air Force, your job comes first. No matter what, if something comes up and everybody has to be on hand, all hands on deck, you gotta be there. You don't have free time anymore. You don't have that privilege. If you have a normal civilian job and your boss calls you up and says, hey, we need you to come into work. Somebody is sick, we need you to come in. In the civilian world, you could be like, no, I don't wanna come in. In the military world, it's like, I'm coming in or security force is gonna come to arrest you. Pretty much active duty Air Force, you just have a lot more time to yourself. You have to discipline yourself to make sure you're still going to the gym, make sure that you're still trying to get your education if you want to get promoted. You'll still get promoted if you don't have your education, but it makes it a lot faster. It's all about what you want. If you want to just sit around the Air Force and not really do a whole lot, then you can do that. If you want to push ahead and be the best, you can do that. It's up to you. Now, the second part of your question is, how do I get to my first duty base? Now, you have two options. You can either take your civilian car and then the Air Force will pay you for your gas, or you can take an uh, airplane and you can just get there and the Air Force will pay for your ticket. If you know you want to bring your car, then go home and get your car and then drive to your duty base. Now, no matter where you're coming from, if you're going to a new base, there's always going to be a sponsor there for you. A sponsor is either somebody of your rank or higher ranking than you, somebody from your shop, somebody from your job, who got the word that you're coming through, that you're coming in, you have your orders. So your sponsor is going to be in contact with you throughout your tech school, throughout wherever you're at, your last base, whatever. They're going to make sure that you know that they're there for you. When you finally get into the airport or into town or whatever, they're going to pick you up, they're going to show you around town, show you around the base, get you to your room, give you your key, and they'll say, hey, this is your room and then they'll pretty much like leave. If you need anything else, here's our phone number, let me know. From then on, you're pretty much just in like an empty room. I kind of just like sat around my room for a while, just kind of looked around like, this is my first house, not house, but like this is my first room that I can call mine. If you ever need anything, then call up your sponsor. Make sure that they know if you're having any problems or if you need more information, if you need a way around base or something, if you need to buy stuff, then ask them so that they can take you to the BX so you can buy some essentials. Once you get to base, if you don't already have a car and you want to buy one as soon as possible, don't buy an expensive car because you'll get orders in like two years and then you'll have to leave and then you'll have to figure out what I'm going to do with this brand new vehicle. But that's just a quick tip. Other than that, there's not really much you have to worry about. Your sponsors will take care of it for you. They'll make sure that you're picked up at your airport or if you drive into town, they'll make sure that you, they meet up with you in town and bring you back to base and all that stuff. But that's pretty much it. If you guys have any more questions, leave them down in the comment box below. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you like and subscribe. See you guys next time. Peace.